Welcome to Total Picture Radio. We produce cutting-edge videos, webinars, podcast interviews with a focus on talent acquisition, recruiting HR technology, leadership, and innovation. Visit our conference and events page on totalpicture.com to learn about Total Picture Media's unique video and podcast marketing opportunities available at many of the most important conferences and unconferences throughout 2015. Today, we're continuing our look at stealth apps for passive candidates and frustrated in-mail recruiters with what I'm calling a Flipping Coasts HR Technology Series. We started out on the West Coast with Tom Leon with uh, Poachable uh, in Seattle. Last week, we flipped to the East Coast to talk with Yarden Tadmore, the CEO of Switch. And now we're switching back to the West Coast to learn about Jobber, which is J-O-B-R-A-P-P dot com, based in beautiful San Francisco. And joining me is the co-founder and CEO of Jobber, TJ Nagian. So, um, TJ, let's start with your backstory. Uh, how did you get involved in this whole thing? Uh, sure. So, um, my background, uh, I'm actually more formally trained in business uh, than sort of starting companies. Uh, I went to school for business at uh, Michigan. Um, and for the last six years, I've actually been investing into high growth uh, tech companies, uh, primarily mobile companies. I worked at several different sort of venture capital uh, and private equity investing firms. Um, and throughout that uh, process, uh, realized there was a major gap um, in uh, sort of the business section of the App Store uh, from a UI uh, perspective. And I saw a number of industries uh, sort of being transformed uh, with mobile first players emerging as new leaders and felt like uh, the business section and professional experience on mobile was behind other categories and felt like um, some innovation there with a mobile first mindset um, would be uh, really valuable for a lot of people. So um, ended up thinking about different ways to uh, sort of meet that uh, gap. Uh, at the time, I was actually spending a lot of time uh, thinking about investing in, in Tinder um, and realized a similar UI uh, may actually work for jobs. So uh, that's sort of how the idea uh, was born. Um, and we ended up launching actually mid-2014. So we launched in, in May of 2014. Um, and we've, I guess, now been live on the iOS App Store uh, for about seven months or so. So still a relatively early company. Uh, you know, we've learned quite a bit in over those seven months. Uh, we're extremely happy with the, you know, traction that, that we've seen so far, and uh, we're really excited about what's uh, what we still have in store. Okay, so this currently is an iOS app. Um, is it uh, does it work on tablets as well as on iPads as well as smartphones? Sure. So we launched, uh, you know, first with an iOS app. Mm -hmm. uh, you can download it from the App Store, uh, the iOS App Store today. It's called Jobber, J-O-B-R, and uh, that actually serves both candidates and recruiters. In addition, um, actually, uh, in at the end of the summer, early fall last year, we also launched a uh, web portal as well. Uh, for recruiters. So recruiters can use both the iOS app and the web portal uh, and get the same functionality out of both. Candidates today are uh, constrained to the iOS app. We'll be launching an Android app uh, in the coming months as well. And, and according to uh, your media profile on Jobber, um, you currently have over 100,000 jobs on your platform. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, it's a number that changes regularly. Today, we're actually at 600,000 jobs. So. 600,000. Okay. All right. Now, uh, you know you know the game that's played on, on job boards. So, I mean, a lot of the jobs on job boards aren't real jobs. They're, they may be jobs that companies have put up because they're doing, you know, pipeline stuff. They just want to have a whole list of candidates available uh, in case somebody leaves the company. So, would you classify these are as current real jobs that our uh, recruiters are trying to fill today? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, we do a lot to dedupe, and, uh, you know, a lot of them are sort of organic jobs uh, that are uh, put on by recruiters directly on Jobber. We have over 2,000 of those uh, already today. 
uh, and you know a number of them are through partners that we work with as well. Now, are are these mainly jobs in tech companies or tech based kinds of jobs for you know developers and engineers, or uh, are you expanding the marketplace? Sure. Yeah, so uh, when we started, uh, we definitely saw uh, an early adopter uh, sort of crowd on Jobber, which I would classify as tech and finance uh, professionals, uh, primarily in sort of major metropolitan areas in the U.S., so places like um, New York, San Francisco, uh, Los Angeles, Chicago. Um, However, over the past uh, few months, uh, we've noticed actually uh, a shift. So um, we are starting to essentially go more mainstream uh, and have a much broader uh, user base. So um, in addition, our jobs sort of reflect that as well. Uh, so um, today you can still find all those sort of tech and finance jobs on the platform. Uh, but in addition, you can. it also works for some sort of uh, you know, lower end jobs and blue collar jobs, et cetera. So uh, we kind of run the gamut. And uh, what we are really focused on is um, providing the highest quality recommendations uh, to a candidate uh, without them actually having to search. So essentially taking their uh, background and profile information and being able, to, uh, based on that, to make really relevant job recommendations and then taking their feedback, uh, which we're getting uh, regularly from them uh, based on their interests, uh, and making better recommendations. So we actually think about it a lot, uh, like almost like Pandora or Netflix uh, in, in that manner, uh, where the algorithm is actually extremely important and making sure that we're serving sort of the right recommendations to the right people at the right time uh, is our, you know, our number one focus. Regarding the candidates that are currently on your platform, how many candidates do you currently have, do you know? Uh, yeah, so we're over 100,000 users. Um, that's, you know, we don't like to talk, you know, too specifically about that number. We're not in the mil- millions yet, but we, you know, hope to get there shortly. And are these folks who predominantly are currently working known as passive candidates? Uh, so it's a, it sort of runs the gamut. Um, a number of them are passive uh, candidates, uh, but a number are also active candidates. Um, and I'd say it's it's hard for us to really tell, um, you know, what defines an active or passive candidate. Uh, so it's uh, again, it's it, it's something that's sort of difficult. What I will say is that um, we in our you know we've used job, uh, Jobber quite a bit for our own recruiting efforts. We've hired over half of our team through mm-hmm. the platform, and um, you know we have sort of through our own searches on, on Jobber for uh, specifically a data scientist, I think... Oh, that's uh, an easy find. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly. In San Francisco, uh, spent, yeah. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we've, we've spent over... It's been a long uh, trial, but uh, I'd say I had... Um, call it about uh, 40 conversations with data scientists on the platform um, over the course of a few months, and... Um, Everybody that I talk to, I'd say ninety percent of them have changed jobs in that time frame. So uh, I think there's more active than passive candidates. Uh, however, you know, it's kind of a it's hard to quantify exactly what the spread is. Let's, um, let's rewind for just a minute and and go back to so let's say I am a candidate. I download your app. Then what do I have? What do I have to do to get on your platform? Can I like link my LinkedIn profile or or yep. what? Yeah, so today uh, the experience for both candidates and recruiters is the same, uh, where you uh, download the app, um, or for, if you're a recruiter, you can also go on the web. And we require you today to log in using your LinkedIn information. Uh, y- using that information, we're able to create uh, a profile for you. Um, you're also able, uh, if you're a candidate, to uh, email us a resume, and we'll attach that to your profile as well. Um, in the future, there will be more onboarding options. I refer to this as a stealth app in, in my open here. I, I am assuming you strip out the names and, and if they're currently working, where they're currently working. How, how does this work? Sure. So, yes, uh, we uh, all of our candidates are essentially anonymous. Um, their contact information, their names uh, are hidden until they essentially 
indicate interest and match uh, with a job. However, um, we prevent candidates uh, from seeing, or em also employers, from seeing anybody that they've ever worked with. So um, we essentially hide any candidate's profile from anybody that worked or has worked at any of their past employers. So essentially the candidate will remain anonymous, not only to their existing employer, but to any employer they've ever had. And they are also anonymous until they indicate interest in a job. Uh, so uh, we don't, um, we're not in the business of trying to uh, essentially get people fired for, for looking for a job. So we do a lot uh, around privacy and, and, and safety of our, of our users. Uh, from, from the employer's uh, standpoint, um, do they upload like a standard job rec or how does it work on the employer's side? Yeah, so uh, I'm not sure if you've, if you've had a chance to, to play with the, um, with the app, but we focus on sort of enhancing uh, sort of the typical job listing. So, um, and we think this is really important for mobile. So uh, we feature um, uh, a main image, which is a large you know, image that represents uh, you know, the brand or product of the company that they will be working at or potentially the, the type of role that is being advertised. Uh, in addition, we also um, you know, have a, a, a logo of the company uh, on there. You know, we describe a bit about the company. And then we, we go into sort of the, the more uh, typical job description. We also enhance that and, and you know, uh, run some natural language processing to add skills, and that actually becomes really important in our, in our algorithm. So we're pretty focused on having uh, an enhanced listing to candidates. Recruiters have the ability to uh, create their own uh, listings that they can fully customize. Uh, we think that it is a much better experience for both the candidate and then also for the companies because it, uh, when a candidate uh, discovers, if you will, uh, a company or a job, um, they want to understand sort of what that brand is really about. So we really have a strong focus on keeping really high quality uh, listings that is sort of not very typical in the web world. Yeah, that, that's really interesting. And, and I did spend some time looking at, at uh, w what you're putting out there, which is very different from what you would see on a standard job board. And, and you know, let's face it, TJ, most of these job wrecks just suck. I mean, it's like they're written by the legal department or something. And, they, you know, there's there's no zing to them. I don't, you know, I don't even know. It's just like, here are the requirements. You've got to have this number of years, and these are the things that you have to have, and blah blah. You know, and they all use the same. You know, we are a leading employer, and we're blah. It's all the same crap. Yeah, we. Um, so there, there are reasons for that as well, and we recognize uh, that. Yeah, so. it's a lot of the legal ramifications, the EEOC, and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, I think that's right. There's partially legal ramifications. There's also today the jobs industry in the in the online world has really you know it started in sort of uh, with job boards and now has sort of uh, you know shifted to job aggregators uh, anyways um, search is really important right and does end up driving a lot of traffic and, and applications to job listings so um, in order to optimize for more traffic, more applications, oftentimes people creating these job, uh, job recs will optimize around sort of keywords so that they come up and search more often. And that oftentimes can be a detriment to the candidate. It's not really providing the candidate uh, the experience that they're looking for. So there are a number of, you know, uh, of companies that do have a stronger focus on sort of uh, enhancing the candidate's experience. You know, uh, in mobile, we think that's really important. So we spend a lot of time on it in the, you know, in the online world. And actually, even starting in mobile, another that we sort of look at and admire uh, a bit is Glassdoor, uh, who provides, you know, in addition to, you know, quite a bit of imagery around uh, companies, uh, you know, a, a, a good company description uh, and uh, user generated content around reviews of what it's been like to work there. So I think that they're another player that um, is doing more to enhance sort of that candidate experience that's sort of differing a little bit from the typical, at least, job board or aggregator right. uh, that's out there. Right. And another company that's doing a great job with that is The Muse. Um, 
you've been on on their website, that they have videos with uh, actual employees that work at the companies. They have you know great photographs of, of the working space, and yeah, so and so there is a trend out there. There seems to to with companies trying to enhance the image now that so much of this obviously is done over mobile, over oh, done over social networks, over Facebook and LinkedIn that uh, I think companies really need to understand that, that, that they need to present themselves in a, in a much more sort of uh, visual graphic way than they have in the past. I think that's exactly right. Um, and we're, we're trying to uh, sort of take advantage of that, um, especially playing to things that the mobile uh, job seeker is really looking for. Um, you know, in the, the, in the desktop world, things like search are really important and subsequently you want a lot of words. However, in the mobile world, uh, people don't want to type, <laughs> frankly. Uh, so we need to move uh, to sort of a gesture-based feedback model um, and a really good, essentially, prediction engine to try and understand what people would like and get really good at that. In addition, you know, mobile is very visual. Uh, so uh, we need to sort of do a lot to enhance those listings. Um, and uh, we think that this will be really good for brands as well, particularly brands you know, that uh, you know, want to have uh, a positive you know, re um, way to resonate with a candidate and sort of stand out amongst others. So uh, our candidates seem to, to really like it, um, as do the, the, the enterprises and companies that we're working with. So we're very focused on keeping that uh, experience uh, very, very high quality for the mobile seeker. Are you able to integrate with any of the applicant tracking systems, the Taleos or success factors of the world? Yes, uh, we have integrated now with several. Um, we are rapidly trying to expand that. That's the number one thing that we typically hear from enterprises. Um, oftentimes, uh, that can be tricky, right? So uh, this is there's a huge gap um, between the essentially the application completion rates on desktop and mobile, and it varies highly by ATS, essentially what type of job format uh, is required. Uh, so uh, just to give you and maybe some listeners at least my perspective on this, in the desktop world, the kind of average uh, percent of people that land on a job listing to apply is call it around 10%. On mobile, however, it's about 2%. <laughs> so there's a at least a 5x difference right. between desktop and mobile. And very little has been done uh, to date to help uh, address that gap. Now, this becomes really important because already today, 60% of Indeed's traffic, the largest aggregator in the world, 60% is mobile. Mm -hmm. So um, to essentially be having a 5x plus difference in your application completion rates uh, for the majority of your traffic, uh, and the majority of users, uh, that's uh, really, really bad. So um, the, the reason that that is, is uh, that the, most ATSs and most job listings were created in a, in a world when there was really only desktop, so that's all they had to optimize for. Um, and uh, you know, transitioning to mobile uh, is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so um, that's what we're really trying to solve, uh, is we're trying to narrow that gap. Uh, we think we've you know, found a way to do that. Uh, and so we're, we're really trying to improve that candidate experience and then, you know, also uh, sort of enhance uh, essentially the, the quantity and quality of candidates that recruiters receive. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. I mean, that so many of job applicants now are using a mobile device to search for jobs, you know, and especially passive candidates, they're not going to use their company computer to, exactly you know, right. to go search for jobs or to respond <laughs> yep. to an in-mail or whatever, uh, they're going to use their mobile device. And the, the drop-off rate you know, for people who cannot do the actual apply using their mobile device is, is enormous. And, you know, and especially in certain verticals like the trucking industry, UPS I mean, gets now the vast majority of their applications over mobile. Uh, fast food... Uh, you know, uh, retail, you know, some of the, the uh, uh, entry level kinds of jobs. I mean, you really need to have a mobile apply solution if you want to generate the kinds of uh, candidate responses and, and uh, uh, 
uh, job requests that that you're trying to do, you know, uh, for employers. I think that's ex exactly right, and that's what we are dead focused on. So there's, I think, two things that are important. One is essentially bridging the gap of, you know, kind of having five x more, <laughs> kind of five uh, x higher success rate on desktop versus mobile. So that's one thing that we're trying to bridge, and then the second is actually um, quality. Uh, so uh, the trouble with the sort of traditional online job space in most cases is it's really driven by search um, and any candidate can kind of search for for any job uh, they can apply to any job I could go on I could apply for a trucking job I could apply for a nursing job and there's really not a lot that the uh, aggregators or job boards can do to control the quality of the types of candidates that are applying for, for uh, jobs. That's one thing that we uh, think a lot about. Um, so we require a profile to be created. We understand sort of the work history of all of our uh, end users. And subsequently, our recommendations are tailored to both uh, you know, the candidates and the recruiters, right? We're thinking about both with uh, the thought process that we, we can't control what the candidate will end up wanting to do. However, we can guide them towards what we think will, they will have the highest success rate with and what we think you know, recruiters will like the most. So theoretically, we, we have the ability to improve the quality of our applications versus sort of the, the traditional industry. And that, um, I think, is a really important um, thing that, that we are trying to tackle. Yeah, and, and if you talk to recruiters, the, the main complaint they have over using the traditional job boards, especially the, the large ones like... Career Builder and Monster is that ninety five percent of the applications they get are from people who are nowhere near qualified to yep. fill those jobs. Right. Well, the other thing that is sort of unique to mobile, which is different uh, than sort of what I just said, is um, you have sort of new. Uh, there's a new form factor, right? So, and that creates new experiences. So, one thing that's different is we know uh, the GPS location of our candidates. We know their home city, and we also know their GPS location. So we can actually, for sort of uh, more retail or sort of local type jobs, mm -hmm. uh, we can actually restrict um, applications. We will only actually send applications through if a candidate is physically within a 25 or 50 mile radius of that job. We can even make it as you know as little as five miles, and that's something that uh, is sort of unique to mobile devices. There are a number of other you know things. That's just one example where. You can use sort of uh, mobile devices and at least more information to try and improve the quality. So, uh, what's your revenue model, TJ? Yeah, so uh, we have a few different uh, revenue models. Um, you know, uh, everything is free to the candidate. Um, and um, for small recruiters that want to come on the platform and just use it in a self serve manner, we actually offer Jobber for free. Um, for enterprises who want uh, more of an enterprise level support, who you know would be managing fifty plus listings on the platform, uh, we you know work with them uh, to uh, help them uh, with that to get you know a higher number of their listings up uh, to help them manage that that process essentially to integrate into their ATS, et cetera. Um, and then you know we also do work with a number of partners like. Uh, job boards and aggregators, et cetera, to drive essentially more more applications to some of their listings. So we have a few different revenue models that uh, we are uh, working with today. Um, the, it's all free to the candidate um, and actually free for small recruiters on the platform um, today. And um, our goal really is improve quality, provide a really high quality experience for both the candidate and the recruiter. Do you offer any kind of a uh, guarantee to employers? Let's say they hire someone off of your platform, they pay a, a fee, and that person leaves three weeks later. Uh, do they get their money back? Yeah, so um, we, we actually, so that, that's actually more of a um, sort of a traditional recruiter model where essentially you're taking a percentage uh, of the, you know, the hires, the candidates, the hires, first year's salary, or maybe it's a fixed fee uh, per hire. Uh, we we don't uh, operate in a per, on a per hire basis uh, today, uh, so uh, that's a bit different than than what we do. 
So you, you're selling packages, basically. Of you know, you you list a hundred jobs on our platform. Uh, you're an, an, you know, a large company. Um, I noticed you, you have some, some very well known companies like Google who are using your platform. So Google puts a hundred jobs up on their plat on your platform, and they pay X for placing those jobs. Uh, that, yes, that, that uh, exactly. I mean. If you're if you're a, a Google recruiter and you just want to try the platform, you can do it for free today, either by using the app or our web platform, uh, create a listing, swipe, match, and chat directly with candidates through our platform. Or um, you know, if if they wanted to you know grow the number of listings on the platform to call it a hundred or a thousand, uh, we would typically need to work with them and help them get that many listings up and help them uh, sort of manage that flow. Uh, get it into their ATS, et cetera, um, and then they'd pay a fee for that. And uh, that's basically how that, that model works. Are you tracking uh, the time to fill? I mean, you know, that's a huge metric that most recruiters look at is, and, you know, the average time to fill uh, last year was around three months. Um, is this mobile platform, a, a quicker fill? So we would love to be able to track that. Uh, in almost all cases, it, it is out of our control. Um, so we are mm -hmm. not, we would need to be like fully in the ATS in order to understand the candidate flow. Uh, things that we do right. know on our platform are essentially uh, page views, applications, uh, and then you know matches and chats within the app. Um, Right. So uh, we get feedback from both recruiters and candidates through surveys, uh, and and just you know letting us know. However, knowing the exact amount of time from uh, listing a job to actually filling that position um, is a little bit out of our control at this point. So once the handoff happens, then it's you're you're pretty much out of the. Yeah. Picture one thing that. that we do monitor uh, is sort of uh, communication between the candidate and the recruiter. Uh, oftentimes that can happen through our platform via chat. Um, and uh, what we've noticed is the best recruiters on our platform are actually um, you know, trying to find these, these harder to get candidates. Um, they're making themselves available sort of at any and all times via chat. They're doing sort of one or two screening questions through chat. They get quick responses from candidates and it's a, a more fluid conversation that's a lot more dynamic than say an email conversation. And then um, if, if the candidate is good, the, the recruiter will oftentimes just do a phone interview on the spot. They'll just put their phone number into chat, do a call right on the spot, call uh, you know, maybe 10 to 15 minutes. And if the phone interview goes well, move them you know, right into an in-person interview. So uh, we do think that there is an element of sort of real-time recruiting and a faster feedback loop for both candidates and recruiters by using the platform. And the most successful recruiters on the platform are certainly taking advantage of that. Well, TJ, thank you so much for taking time to speak with us today here on Total Picture Radio. It's been uh, fun having this conversation, and best of luck to you. Thanks so much. We really appreciate you, uh, you uh, thinking of Jobber and featuring us to your users. And hopefully they'll uh, be able to try out the platform for free and find value in it.